Hi, I'm Tony Nichols, and welcome to Chamber Chat. Hi, I'm Tony Nichols and welcome to this edition of Chamber Chat, a program put together by the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce to keep you informed of what's going on in your community and in your chamber. Joining us now, and I have to work with this title, Derek Jarman, Youth Sports Program Director uh, for um, the Wicomico County Re Par Recreation, Parks and Tourism. That's correct. You nailed it. Dude, y'all got to work on the titles over there, dude, and the, the name and come up with an acronym or... An say, acronym. We're, so we're good I, at that. I work over there. Okay, we can do that. We'll, we'll get you on payroll. Welcome to the program, brother. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, look, uh, it, it's starting to warm up. Um, people want to get outside, start doing some things. Uh, the kids never want to be inside. No. Um, but things are starting to heat up over there. So uh, give, give us a little overview of... Um, youth sports. Okay. Um, youth sports right now, man, it's going strong. We're finishing up with our junior girls softball program, um, which is, is huge in the county. Uh, our our yeah. ladies the, and coaches, they love softball. They're, they're passionate about it, which is great. Um, after that, we'll be finishing up or starting uh, our soccer league for uh, our young kids all the way up through U14 in the fall. Uh, and then moving into the winner will actually be starting a new basketball league, which we're super excited about. Um, but along with our leagues, we've got great instructional or fundamental programs that we talk about, mm -hmm. uh, like our, our T-ball, our volleyball instructional program, um, our summer hoops camp that's coming up, um, just to name a few. Um, we, we've, got a, we've got a lot of things. The, every, every time I hear T-ball, I guess I'm so old now that we didn't have T-ball. That was a little kid on the mound throwing a ball at you <laughs> at that age. Um, and sometimes you got hit. So, um, well, no, it's, it's, it's about a progression. It's it about is. a proper right. proper age-appropriate progression. Laying the foundation. Yes, yes, laying the foundation. Getting that ball on the tee, getting your swing right, so then you can work on other things, the fielding and all that good stuff. So you talked about a, a, a new basketball league. Yes. Is that something where, I mean, I mean, basketball is everywhere. Everybody plays basketball. I played basketball. You played basketball. Everybody, whether you were good or whether you weren't good, everybody played basketball. Um, is that something that you guys uh, saw a need for in the community and are, are filling a void or just see that there's such a high demand you need to put something else in place? Uh, I think it was a unique situation, a little bit of both. I think the community came to us and okay. they asked us, you know, what were we doing for basketball? We've had huge success uh, building off of the Governor's Challenge, yep. um, the, uh, the largest high school holiday uh, hoops. Um, tournament that Pretty there wild, is. Pretty wild, isn't it, right here in County? It is, it is, right right in our backyard, um, as well as with our, our Summer Hoops program with uh, Coach Brian McDermott. We've had great success with those two programs and events, and the community has asked, what else do you have for basketball? They're thirsty, they're, they're hungry for it, and we're passionate about basketball in our department. Uh, we play pickup games here and there, and, mm -hmm. and we love, and we've gotten a chance to kind of see that some of the fundamentals aren't always taught at the level that they need to be at that, that mm -hmm. young age that young that young fresh uh, basketball player clean that slate. clean slate you haven't had the opportunity to to create those bad habits yet so we're trying to get them fresh clean slate um, get a ball in everybody's hands and really teach them the basics the fundamentals and and get them to enjoy the game yeah so when you say youth what what kind of age group are we talking about we're, we're starting, we're starting, I mean, super fresh. Kindergarten. Oh, come on. We're starting with kindergarten, getting a basketball in kindergartner's hands all the way up to our eighth graders. All the way up to our well, eighth graders. Well, you know, that, that's a clean slate. So, but at the same time, those when, that's when those motor skills are developing. The, we have soccer. We have t-ball. We do. We do. Um, so, we, I, you know, it makes sense. And I can know. speak from experience. I've got, I've got a six-year-old at home, and he's starting to get into basketball and dribbling and, you know, figuring out not slapping at the ball. 
that you want to use your, your finger pads, that you, you want to use those foundational skills that will continue to grow throughout kindergarten, first grade, second grade, all the way up, hopefully, till they get to, uh, to high school and beyond, if, if that's what they decide to do. Do you let your six-year-old beat you? Uh, you know what? I, when I was younger, probably not. But now, da Daddy will take a couple L's here and there. I don't know. I never. Uh, Daddy so will I, take I was a, a mean. I was a mean dad. I never let him beat me at anything. And now they beat me at everything. Now my two-year-old, <laughs> he's you know, I, I still block his shot here and there. <laughs> so, you know, the 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 concept of youth sports is changing forever. I remember way way uh, uh, in the past, a long time ago. Uh, kick, pass, and punt. They still have kick, pass, and punt, but <laughs> I have three third place trophies from kick, pass, and punt. Hey, it's um, a tro everyone gets a trophy. But no, not then. <laughs> they do now. But there's always a, a new nuance to youth sports. Mm -hmm. Somebody's always coming up with a new and fresh idea. How do you, how do you stay in front of that? I think it's the foundation, foundation piece. It's not necessarily chasing the trend, but it's standing strong on our foundation. And our foundation is uh, our youth sports core values, uh, fun, community, sportsmanship, and skill development. Every program for our youth is built on those four core values. Um, so when we decide to start this basketball league, we've got to make it fun. We have to make it fun not only for the participants, but for the parents, uh, for the coaches, and for those spectators. Uh, making sure that it's a community base that everyone in our community feels that this is something that they want to be a part of. Um, whether you've picked up a ball before, whether you've been playing basketball for four or five years, uh, that skill development piece, making sure that um, it, it's age appropriate. You know, I, I've seen young kids shooting on a, a 10 foot basket and you and I both know right. that that's not good. You're that shooting works. from shooting from the from the hip. It's, it's not going to cre create the, the new Steph Curry. Um, right. You know, and, and just making sure that, again, we're, we're not chasing trends. We're trying to be innovative with what works for us. A key word that stuck out to me in your, in your core disciplines there was fun. At kindergarten, everybody's going to have fun. Mm -hmm. Even at 10 years old, they're having fun, but they're only having fun if they're winning. They start to develop a little bit of attitude, and, but so if, if you step back, it sounds like if, if you step back to the next, uh, to the next rung at kindergarten, um, it's always fun. You, you teach those foundational traits, how to win, how to lose, uh, what good sportsmanship is, because they listen at that age. They do, they do, and fun, I mean, fun is all relative. But you have to realize that if you aren't having fun, if you're not enjoying it, you're not going to put the effort in. True. You're not going to put the work in to get better because it's not something that is enjoyable to you. Mm -hmm. um, so when that, that skill development is fun and you're not even realizing that, you know, I'm running sprints, but I'm, I'm working on 10 layups in the right. least amount of time, but I'm also working on conditioning. You're thinking, I'm just out here. I'm scoring as many points All as right. I can. So that's, that's fun to me. All right. So we got basketball coming, the, the new program there. Anything, any other programs new on the horizon? Any new events coming up? We're, we're always working. We're I saw always, the smirk on your face. We're, we're, always, we're always working. <laughs> uh, we've got a back-to-school event that we're teaming up with uh, all three Rotary Clubs of uh, Salisbury. We've got Sunrise Rotary Club, um, Rotary Club of Salisbury, and Rotary Club of Wicomico County, um, as well as the uh, Wicomico Board of Ed and uh, Extraordinary League of Gentlemen. Um, to promote just positive, positive vibes for kids, um, going back to school, um, having their mind right, mm -hmm. and getting everything that they need resource-wise. Um, so we want to give out uh, free backpacks, mm -hmm. free school supplies, on top of uh, free haircuts, uh, free hair right. styling for our, our, our boys and I our girls. Good. You have to look good. When you look good, you feel good, and, yeah. and hopefully that's a stress that's, that's off a of parent's hands. Um, sure. You know, when, when you have more than one child, it becomes expensive to get the backpacks and try to keep up with all the trends of backpacks and the Rose Art crayons and the, the Crayola crayons. Um, but we also want to get our community, um, community uh, organizations in to come out and talk about their resources that they have to offer to the community, whether it's uh, the health department with free immunizations, uh, PRMC talking about kind of wellness and um, library. 
Y Comico Library. Hopefully we're able to get them out there and talk about reading. Uh, you know, in, in school, I was a, obviously an a athletic person. I, I love to play sports, but my parents always told me, you know, you got to keep your, your nose in a book. Um, that book is going to take you very far, the skills that you'll learn from reading. Um, so just giving them, giving them an, an avenue to, to come out, have fun, that last little, little bit of enjoyment and getting some, some great resources before starting a brand new school year. So my, I assume that for people that want to find more information, they can just uh, call the Civic Center or visit um, the um, Youth our, and Civic Center a website? Yep, we have our website. It's uh, ycomicorexandparks.org, and there's information on not only our programs for adult, youth, and our special events, uh, but if you go to the Contact Us tab mm -hmm. at the top, you can go and fill out. It's called a Neighbor to Neighbor Application. And basically, that is an application for anybody in, in the community to fill out whether you want to help us out with the Run to Remember, which is happening this weekend. So any kind of volunteer. You any, can type of, any type of volunteers. Even if you want to be a coach, we're, we're always looking for um, passionate coaches that want to teach those core values of that fun uh, community sportsmanship and skill development. Um, and it's, it's a way for them to give back to the community. Right. I've Fantastic. met a lot of folks that you know, don't really know how to get involved in youth sports. This is this is the way. Well, Derek, it's no shock that you guys have it going on over there. You always have, and uh, it's, it's good to see that continuing. Um, and we look forward to hearing more about basketball in the near future. Oh, you will, certainly. Thanks for joining certainly. us here on Chamber Chat. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We'd like to give you the opportunity now to take a look at the upcoming events with the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce. Welcome back to Chamber Chat right here on Pack 14. Joining us now is Vera Ogburn, the co-founder and president of Minds in Motion Children's Museum right here in Salisbury, almost. Yes, thank you so much for having me today, Tony. Um, so we, we get the Children's Museum part. Mm -hmm. It's the Minds in Motion part that I want to talk about. T tell us what the Minds in Motion part means. We, we've all seen a Children's Museum, but specifically the Minds in Motion. Certainly. Um, well, Minds in Motion will be a hands-on museum that will have interactive exhibits encouraging children to learn through creative play. So we'll be designed to have children to touch and use their imagination to explore and discover and create, hopefully fostering a lifetime love of learning. So, so what, I, what I picture when, when, when I hear that description <clears throat> is the way I grew up is the way many people grew up in the yard, touching, feeling, doing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to do that again because the experience was bad. I want to do this again because the experience was good. And nowadays, they sit in front of a television many times and with a controller in their hand um, and play a video game. That's right. It's sad. Um, our culture today is just so hands-on with technology. And we're trying to pull away from that. We're trying to bring back unstructured play. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, studies have been um, reported and says, you know, unstructured play helps children developmentally sure. in school and their academics and just the whole child. So mm -hmm. maybe I'm being a little more simplistic than I need to be, but there's nothing more, there's no better education than being in the community, in the neighborhood, out playing with the kids in the summertime, mm -hmm. exploring doing things now we you know this day and time you can't go explore like we did when sure. i was young but but making uh, mud at dirt cookies correct exactly <laughs> you know how simple like pretending like we're baking um in fact some of the examples of the exhibits that we'll have inside the museum is a grocery store mm -hmm. a doctor's office a construction site a maker space so they'll be able to learn what it is to build a birdhouse sure. or you know uh, be involved in 3d printing so there will also be social and cognitive and mm -hmm. behavioral learning components to each exhibit, but um, resulting in uh, developing a curious and a confident learner 
which benefits our community. So there's obviously not one in Salisbury because mm -hmm. you're trying to make it happen. That's correct. Where is the closest one to us? Well, Tony, the closest children's museum comparable to Minds in Motion is approximately two hours away. Really? Mm-hmm. There's one in Baltimore and there's one in Wilmington. So obviously this makes it challenging for students to come to the museum on a frequent basis mm -hmm. to learn, yeah. you know, while they're playing. Yeah, mom so. and dad aren't driving two hours for the kid to, you know, they might go to the, the aquarium. Right. But yeah, they're not yeah. going to hang out two hours at a museum. That'd be cool. So, so where, where's the plan? What, you know, where do you want your footprint to be in Salisbury? So we would like to be in Salisbury because the founders, which are, we were conceived, there was, con Minds of Motion was conceived by three educators, myself included, Heather Charlton and Deb Giles. And all of uh, three of us are passionate about the current revitalization of Salisbury. Also, Salisbury is a crossroads for the Dunbar Peninsula. Mm -hmm. So we want to be within the city of Salisbury. And um, downtown, so. hopefully. Maybe. We need um, a lot of space, 8,500 okay. square feet. Oh, wow. So there's nothing right now that um, downtown can offer us, but you never know. We'd like to partner up with nonprofit. So we'd like to partner up with places like the Salisbury Art Space and M4 Reactor. They're all three of them mm -hmm. um, are nonprofit uh, organizations, and they are focused on hands-on technology yep. or hands-on um, exhibits encouraging children to learn and adults to learn. Know them so. all, and they all do great work. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, you know, I, I did a little bit of homework. <clears throat> you guys are engaging the community in a pretty, pretty big way. Mm -hmm. um, is is that by design, or is it just fun? I it's both. Okay. It's by design and it's fun. I just really think that it shows um, our community is embracing the fact that we need a children's museum. Mm -hmm. And I think because the result of the need, um, people are organically excited about it and we're having fun with it. So it's, it's a children's a, museum. It's just, it's just <laughs> one more example of Wicomico County being Wicomico County. Yeah. That's the best way to put it yeah, because exactly. it's such a, uh, a giving, caring community that when there's truly a need, the need doesn't exist very long because they feel that need. That's right. and you know that's you know to all of you guys out there. Yeah. Um, so a lot of events. You've already done a lot of events. Are there any events coming up that people could plug in and uh, be a part of? Certainly, we uh, are always in the community. Um, we go. We are going to be at all of the third Fridays. I believe the next third Friday is June fifteenth. Mm -hmm. um, we will have a mommy and me paint night that. That will be determined. Um, our board of directors are currently working on that project. And we're currently going to do our second annual gala, Let's Play, mm -hmm. um, November the 3rd. That, the first one that we held in November was a huge success. So everyone is like, when is the next gala? Mm -hmm. And we've already got the date targeted. Um, we've already got the location. Now we're just in the planning uh, part of it. So. Good. I've asked it was, uh, uh, or there were some runs. We had a hot chocolate 5K. That was so fun with hot chocolate smelling shirts, T-shirts. And... Now, we were talking about running earlier. That might could get me to run. Hot yeah. chocolate may be able to get me to run. Oh, Otherwise, no, it was like three degrees outside. Oh, no. No, there's, there's not that much hot chocolate in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so there's obviously a lot of fundraising, a lot of mm -hmm. getting the word out. Every time it, uh, it appears that every time someone else hears about the museum, it's a uh, wow, why didn't I think of that? Or why don't we already have one? Mm -hmm. uh, how can people become involved and, and help um, get the word out and get this thing, uh, and help, help this become a reality? Right, certainly. Um, well, the community plays a critical role in all of these children's museums. In fact, last week we just left an Association of Children's Museum conference mm -hmm. and we got to hear emerging museum directors and existing museums say the volunteers and the community plays a vital role in establishing a children's museum mm -hmm. in the community. So we need volunteers for all of our events mm -hmm. um, and we have had so much support with that. Um, we also have uh, our ongoing Founding 50 campaign that's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for uh, 50 businesses or organizations or community players to donate $1,000 or more um, to our cause. So we need financial 
um, backing. So we need space and we need money, essentially, <laughs> right. to make this happen because uh, we're looking at $2.1 million to execute wow. our idea, which isn't, you know, unrealistic. And, you know, so far, uh, Tony, the community, like you said, the leaders, the businesses have just hopped right on board mm -hmm. and they believe in our mission and we believe in our mission and our vision and it, it will happen. It's just exciting to see all of it unfold and, and and right now our ongoing campaign is the founding 50 so the first thou, or first 50 that donate a thousand or more they'll get uh, a distinctive plaque okay. on the walls um, of Minds in Motion when we first open so we'll have a wall just for founding 50. Where can people go and find out more information? Um, they can log on to our website Minds in Motion mm -hmm. uh, SB, SBY.org they can like us on Facebook mm -hmm. we keep it pretty current Instagram, we're on Twitter, so we're on all the social media um, aspects, and so, yeah, and they can talk to us. <laughs> well, Vera, I think uh, it's going to be no doubt that we'll be seeing more of you and more of Minds in Motion. Um, so all the best to you, and anytime you want to come back to Chamber Chat and give us an update, you're welcome to do so. Thank you so much, for, Tony, and thank you for having us. All right, so. thank you. We'd like to give you the opportunity now to take another look at the upcoming events with the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce. Welcome back to Chamber Chat, right here on PAC 14. And joining us now is Allie Grace, Executive Director, Director for Salisbury Art Space. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So there may be a few people in the surrounding area that may not know the history mm -hmm. of Salisbury Art Space mm -hmm. and what it was formerly called. Can you give us a little rundown? I can. So we actually have been around for 65 years as an organization. Um, we've changed a lot over the years, mm -hmm. that's for sure. Uh, we started as Wacomico Art League, which was a group of artists, essentially a co-op, that wanted to show together, learn together. Mm -hmm. um, but they wanted to add education, so at one point they became Art Institute and Gallery, 501c3, um, nonprofit. And that lasted for many, many years. I was going to say, and that's, that's where everyone knows you're from. Right. They didn't People know that you still, knew right. <laughs> They'll still come in and say, hi, is this the Art Institute? Yep. Um, and it's not, you know, not that we're against that because that's part of our history. But, but I think we do want people to know that we're, um, part of the reason we've survived for so long is because we're constantly paying attention to the changing community needs and they're always changing. So, um, Recently, we rebranded as Salisbury Art Space, and our new vision is Art for All, which is pretty much what it sounds like. Well, so you, you said the, the changing needs of the community. So how do you see today Salisbury Art Space filling a need in the community? Um, I think that there's a lot of need for um, kind of filling the void of art lacking in the schools. Um, but on top of that, the kids that don't have it in the schools that they don't get it elsewhere and they can't a lot of kids can't afford or families can't afford to pay for extra after school programming or out of school time programming so i think what we do is important because we can offer them the same thing again art for all making sure that everybody has access to it and it's affordable for everybody and that it's applicable to everybody too so. All right, you, you've said art for all twice, so we have to dig yeah. into that a little bit. And, and you may have just given us a little glimpse in your mm -hmm. explanation just then. So, so what, what's the concept of art for all, and why do you have the concept? Okay, so we, we all, I think our organization at one point, a couple years ago, sat down. We literally had a visioning session, and we sat down and said to each other, okay, what do we all want to see for this organization? What direction could we all agree on as far as where we're headed? Um, and basically it came down to those three words, art for all. And it is what it sounds like, that we wanted to make sure that everybody had access to the same things, that everybody could 
participate in some kind of art experience if mm -hmm. they wanted to. Um, and then on top of it, make sure that there's the people that are in the community that say to themselves, I have no, I don't even have the slightest bit of an art bone in my body. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not creative. I don't, I don't believe that personally, right. but a lot of people feel that way about it. And I want to make sure that, you know, they know um, that art it can be applicable to them and we can have private events and we can, we do um, events that are art related but are necessarily, you know, more generalized for everybody. Um, and, and I think it's important to encourage the people that just are convinced that they can't do it because I don't believe that. Right. So, um, so yeah, Art for All just became the reason we thought we should continue to exist is to make sure that, as our mission says, we support uh, emerging and established artists. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure, again, it's essentially the same thing. We want to make sure that everybody's able to be involved. So everyone in the area knows one of the destination points downtown Salisbury mm -hmm. is Salisbury um, Art Space. but. How do you plug in to support, we talked about community, mm -hmm. how do you plug in to support local businesses? Okay, so um, if, again, if you're not convinced that you're an artist and you're not sure if this is necessarily for you, if nothing else, the arts are actually very good for business. Um, and there's a study that was done in fiscal year 2017 uh, by Maryland State Arts Council. It was an economic impact annual study in the state of Maryland. And basically what it came down to is the um, arts bring over 14,000 uh, full-time positions annually and then over a billion dollars wow. in revenues, state revenues mm -hmm. annually. So, um, and I think it's important that we have arts and culture in our downtown community as well because it attracts people. It's actually, um, I read an article once and it said, what attaches people to the community is the arts and culture, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's important that we maintain that element downtown, not just for our locals, but also for people out of town that might stop through. Mm -hmm. We have to have, you know, those really intriguing, unique things that arts and culture often bring if we have more of that downtown, the, you know, the better off we're going to be. And on top of it, we do support the local businesses that exist downtown. So it all kind of works together, and we feel we play an important part of that. All right. We've talked about community. We've talked about businesses. What about the artist? I mean, so you, you spoke a little right. bit of, at the beginning about artists getting together to, to showcase and to learn together. but. So is that still the mission now? But how do you plug in to the artist community and help support them? Gotcha. Um, we, I think because we're Art for All, we definitely have elements of everything mm -hmm. in our organization, not just the on-site but off-site with our community partners. Um, so for the artists locally, some of the ways we directly support them are through art sales in our gallery. They can come in and exhibit in the gallery and get more exposure. And then... Um, they can sell in our gift shop as consignment, and it's 99% local consignment in our gift shops. There's some beautiful stuff in there. There's some really talented artists, and you don't know that until you come see it mm -hmm. firsthand. So we give them a platform, if nothing else. And um, on top of it, we, as I mentioned earlier, emerging and established artists, mm -hmm. we foster that you know, art, the edu art with our education on site and off site, we foster that and allow them to develop their skills over time. And that's for all ages, all okay. demographics. So the new rule is if you say it twice, we have to dig into it. You've said off site uh -huh. and off site partners yes. so twice now. So, so can you dig <laughs> into to what that looks I like? I can. I'm very excited about it. Hopefully I don't go off on a crazy <laughs> tangent. Okay. Um, basically, what, one of the things that we've changed over the past couple of years is we've added off-site outreach programming um, for underserved populations, more specifically uh, at-risk youth mm -hmm. is the most recent. So we've done programs with Fruitland Community Center um, where we bring like story boxes is an, is an example. Okay. 
and we have the kids create to scale houses out of recyclables, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. but they get so creative and they really, they thrive in it. And this programming is only possible through the community partners and through funders. And Community Foundation of the Easter Shore is one of our um, biggest supporters in those kinds of programs, mm -hmm. um, as well as Gannett Foundation and um, the Rotary Club mm -hmm. of Salisbury. And one of the other locations that we do the programming in, which we're repeating for the third year now, and it's going to be three times as many due to the uh, Rotary's Three Point Initiative grant, um, is Camden Community Garden. So we bring the same free art, art projects to the kids there. They get free lunches, um, which is part of the partnership. You know, that's the part that the garden brings in. Um, and then we provide the art, and just seeing the kids' faces in those photos, I can see the difference that it makes for them. We should have started with this because you lit <laughs> I up. Because uh, we're out of time, but, but maybe you can come back and we can dig into that a little bit more. I would love to do um, that. Because that, that the, I can tell we hit your hot button there. So, uh, <laughs> well, we, we know uh, uh, the Salisbury Art Space is going to be here. 65 more years, mm -hmm. so we're Nowhere looking forward to it. Retirement. And I have a new office, <laughs> and I need art. So, uh, I think <laughs> All I, right, I think I'll come be on down. Me. We have a wonderful show up right now, too, called Artists Downtown, which is exactly what I've been talking about, supporting all the people that have made the Arts Downtown possible. Allie, thanks for being on Chamber Chat with us. Thank you so much. We'd like to thank you as well for joining us on this edition of Chamber Chat. And as always, if you missed a portion of this program or you'd like to view previous editions of Chamber Chat, uh, we encourage you to visit Pac-14's Team's website and utilize their own demand feature or visit the Chamber's website. Again, that's all the time we have for this edition of Chamber Chat. My name is Tony Nichols, your host, encouraging you to make a difference. <laughs>